Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had a good Monday. Again, before we uh, continue, if you are brand new uh, to the broadcast, like, share. Uh, I'd love to have you subscribe to uh, support the channel. Again, pretty cool uh, nuggets every single day as we try to navigate these waters one day at a time, right? One day at a time, uh, one trade at a time. So let's talk about the tape. Um, Look, when you look at the scoreboard today at the close, um, something is going to stand out, okay? But it's not the final tally. When you look at the final tally today, you know, pretty gross, right? You got the Dow down 700 points, not a small thing. Uh, S&P down 2%, uh, NASDAQ down 2.5%. Uh, so it's not that the big numbers stand out. Because again, if you, if you, even if you traded uh, as as early as 2020 during the pandemic, you know that 700 points is not that big of a deal in the Dow and you have 3,000 point uh, swings during uh, during the COVID pandemic. It's really not that big of a deal. Uh, what is a big deal that it's not going to be obvious to a lot of traders, uh, the market did something today or did not do something today that it's done for the last five and a half weeks, okay? And that is very important going into uh, tomorrow's session. Uh, if you guys recall, ever since we reclaimed the 278 level on the, on the QQQs, we've been constantly, 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 and we've been talking about this nonstop in every broadcast, every dip has been bought, okay? Even the days that the market is red in the day, the dips were bought, and there's been some sort of rally at some point throughout the day. And most times even going green in the day before the end of the day, whether it's Fed comments, whatever the case may be, sells the market on the close, but everything kind of has been uniform that every single open has been bought, right? And we talked about, uh, we talked about during the weekend video uh, of an area that we needed to watch just in case that didn't happen. Because again, not everything is gonna happen all the time. The trend is a trend and most things are gonna happen within that trend but there's always an aspect of what happens if it doesn't work anymore. And today was a perfect example. Uh, and we talked about this uh, 297 level in the queues on the weekend video. Well, what happens if it doesn't happen, right? And this is where we talk about being prepared. And, and again, you don't need to be a, a pivot trader. You don't need to, to trade in any uh, capacity that's the same as me or opposite as me. A trader is a trader, right? Whether you are a small cap trader, mid cap, uh, you trade the futures, you trade um, crypto, whatever the whatever your drug of choice is, okay, it, it's super important that you have a contingency plan, right? That you have a what happens if all ish hits the fan. You have to be prepared, and whether that is uh, trading a stock like a Tesla, trading a stock like a, a ETF like the Qs, or even trading a two dollar stock, you have to know you're out. You have to know where your lifeline is, or else you know you can be trading blind. You're trading. Uh, as uh, the prey instead of the predator. And it's very, very important to understand that. And today was one of those situations that the market opened up and we're waiting for that first bounce and it never came, right? It's one of those scenarios that, you know, eventually the musical chairs will stop moving and hope to God you have a musical chair. And if not, well, you lose the game. And that's exactly what happened today. Uh, we saw some things, uh, we saw some things that really opened my eyes. Number one, we took out the level that we talked about in the video, this 297, all you have to do is revert back uh, to the weekend's video. I think it was Saturday or Sunday. I think it was Saturday. Uh, the 297 level was the lowest channel in last week's lows. That level got confirmed, right? We said on the video, there's a shot. We get the 293, 294. We close right at 294. Second thing, which is very, very obvious that the leaders, right? The leaders that had their biggest moves up than the videos of the world the Teslas of the world, right? They stopped rallying because they never had they never had a, a bounce. And what's so ironic is if you look at the betting last week on Tesla, they were coming for aggressively the 225s, 230s, right? Those guys expired worthless, uh, so they don't count anymore, right? That's what's called betting on a future event. Not betting technically, but bet, betting on a future event that you're guessing something's going to happen. 
But more important is not only the Tesla not rally, and you know, again, this is definitely one of the biggest high flyers, still up you know, 100% since uh, January 6th, or a little, less, a little less than that. The point is, this is the lowest close. If you guys remember on Friday, it held the 10-day moving average. This is the lowest close on Tesla in this whole formation here, right? This is literally the lowest close in this whole formation below the 10-day moving average. If you are... Uh, if you are uh, been a, an, a, an avid viewer of this channel, of this broadcast, you know how important it is for me, uh, which, you know, the 10 and you know, the 5 and the 10-day moving average. So if they start coming in tomorrow, right, and if, you know, the market gaps up and they stuff the gap up, and if it starts taking down today's channel, you got $10 worth of downside, okay? And that's very, very eye-opening because, again, if you look, if you start looking at the option flow of Tesla, they started coming for the 190s, right? For 190 weeklies with only a couple of days left. Uh, one guy came in uh, right at the close. I think a couple of minutes to the close, he bet 1.2 million of the weekly 192.50 puts. That's not a small bet. Uh, so we have to definitely keep an eye on Tesla tomorrow. If this thing starts losing today's channels, this 10 points in the trade. So we, we really, really have to pay attention uh, to Tesla. NVIDIA, right? Look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA had, uh, is coming out with earnings tomorrow. That's obviously uh, a very important name, especially in the semiconductor space, considering uh, the semis and the biotechs have uh, a very, very strong representation in the NASDAQ 100. They didn't rally NVIDIA ahead of earnings, right? Matter of fact, not only did they not rally NVIDIA ahead of earnings, they closed it right at the 20-day moving average, right? So, it's one of those names you want to keep an eye on tomorrow. Is it possible, you know, the, you know, in, in a bull market or bull thesis, you turn around and say, well, they're going to rally in the stock ahead of the numbers tomorrow. Very possible, right? Very possible. But keep this in mind, right? Just keep on this area. If NVIDIA starts losing the 20-day moving average tomorrow ahead of this earnings, okay? Again, I have, this is not, a, this is not a, 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 an opinion or a fact ahead of earnings. I don't know what's going to happen when they come out with earnings. You know, the stock could be at 225 where the stock could be, at 185. I have no idea. Again, we're not trying to, to guess what's going to happen on earnings, but for tomorrow, strictly as a day trade, if it starts losing uh, and starts confirming this 20 day moving average tomorrow, you know, the video could get hit. So it's something you definitely want to watch. Look at a name like Zoom, not a sexy name anymore, right? Not even a name that a lot of you traders even care about, right? Last time uh, this stock was, you know, was important was during, you know, during the lockdowns, right? This was definitely the leader. Uh, of the lockdowns, all these stocks, Zoom, uh, Docu, TDLC, you can you can make it even uh, a, an argument that Netflix, the stay at home, anything that stay at home. But now nobody cares, right? Nobody cares. I, I use Zoom. We use Zoom in the live webinar. I know a lot of you guys uh, love the product. The product is actually very, very good. But look where this is right now. This thing is right an inch away, right? This You see this light blue line? This is the 50-day moving average, right? If this thing loses the 50-day moving average, you know, again, if you've been watching this broadcast, you kind of know the importance of what happens when you lose the 50-day moving average. So there's a lot of names that, you know, I don't say it a lot, but there's definitely a good amount of names that I'm watching tomorrow that if the queues start confirming today's lows, we can get another day. And if you if you look at the queues, right, if you look at the queues, we stopped right, you know, an inch away, uh, an inch away from, what number is this? This is the 100 and 50 day moving average. Everybody see that, right? This is the 150 day moving average. Low here today uh, was 2380s. The 100 day is like, you know, uh, you know 6370. So the point is if the queues start losing the 50 day moving average, right? We already confirmed this 297. If the queues start losing the two, that that this 293, you know, 293 and a half, 293 area, we, you know, we, there's a shot. We go down the 290, 288. So tomorrow is going to be uh, pretty important here. Again, you know, when you when you start getting exhausted, and, and this is kind of what we talked about all the time, right? The sellers here got tired, right? We, we see this all the time. Sellers here got tired. You had a year of selling, and plus the first week, the sellers got tired here, and we started rallying. It's the same thing to the upside. If the buyers get tired, you can see here, we're, you know, we're starting to put in a good series of lower highs, and today we finally had this first notable crack here below the 20-day moving average. So if the buyers get tired, we, we could be looking at the same thing. All in all, though, if you look, if you take a step back, and that's the most important part, you know, you don't want to, you, you never want to go into the next trading day uh, with, an, with any emotional value. You, you want to look at the raw data in front of you and make your, uh, your you want to make your course of action, your battle plan based on data, not what you think is going to happen. If you take a step back, you can clearly see 
the whole bull thesis is still intact. It'll still be intact until we get right around here, the 50 day moving average, which is still $10 away. So it's nothing, it's nothing imminent. And you know, nobody has to start turning around and start getting, uh, start getting passive in their investments. But again, it's something to be aware about. Just the way we talked about this 297 level on the weekend updates, the same way we're starting to at least whisper, right? Hey, this 50 day moving average is not that far away anymore, right? So the key is going into tomorrow's session. Look, if we start building below today's lows, there could be another three, four points in the queues. It's very, very important. So for the queues, for the bulls, bulls need to reclaim roughly around 299. For the bears, they need to continue what we saw today and start building below this uh, 293.80s. And if they do start going below this 293.80s and you got 290, uh, you got 290 uh, and 288. So it's very, very important to understand. Is it possible we get an inside day tomorrow, a little bit of a balance in the market? Absolutely. Everything is on the table. Oh, guys, always assume everything's on the table. It's not like we're sitting here and this is 2022 and I'm saying, hey, we're below the 50 day moving average. I'm sell bias. I, could, I don't want to buy anything. I want to rip out my butt. We're still a way above, right? Way above the 50 day moving average. So you always have to have a contingency plan of saying, hey, what happens if we don't confirm, right? If we don't confirm down, there'll still be pockets of strength in the market. The key is after, especially after today's two and a half percent sell off on the NASDAQ, the hard part is going to be identifying those areas. What, what I think the bulls definitely do not want to do, and if, you're going to, if you've been watching this broadcast for a while, after an aggressive sell off, the last thing the bulls want to do is a gap up, right? Because if we gap up and we get stuffed at the 60 minute supply, and things start going green to red, then you're gonna have a potential of violence in the market. And that's the that's what's gonna possibly lead for another uh, day two to kind of start the week or continue the week of potential selling. So again, it's a lot, a lot of things to uh, a lot of things to think of, uh, a bunch of names that we're definitely watching for continuation patterns or continuation channels uh going into uh tomorrow's session. We'll see, right? We'll see how it how it plays out. So let's talk about uh let's talk about today. Uh, there wasn't a lot, right? There wasn't a lot, but the ones that went, they went, right? And that's the key. Uh, Qs, again, we started with the Qs. Uh, 297, huge support from February 10. If it builds below, it can flush. As you can see, uh, Qs close right at the lows uh, at 294. Uh, nice move there. Google has been really, really weak. Uh, we, see, we started seeing a lot of 90s, 92 short-term expiration. Uh, 93, if it builds below, it can flush. Here is Google. Right. Google, again, has been basing and fighting over the 50 day moving average. It lost it again today. It took out the 93. It took out this 92.25, which is last week's lows. And this is the lowest close in this whole entire formation. So if there's any more weakness here, you still have room all the way down uh, to 89.60s. Uh, again, here's NVIDIA 209.75. It builds below can flush. 208 is a macro number. Again, reports tomorrow, so make sure it's only a day trade. And NVIDIA got hit. I mean, it really, really got hit. It lost the 209.75, uh, which was Friday's channel. It lost this 208, which was the macro channel, and closed all the way down to this 206 level. I'm telling you, this 206 confirms tomorrow uh, ahead of earnings. You can get another swoosh uh, ahead of its numbers tomorrow. So something to definitely uh, watch. Uh, there was upside, there was there was an upside channel in Tesla and then it closed in the downside channel. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, 208.50 needs to build. It took out 208.50, only ran up about a dollar, you know, dollar, dollar 50. And it kind of obviously got rejected again. Here's also, again, a two-sided channel. We always like to be prepared. Here's one to the downside. Here's one to the upside. So you had 209.75 to the downside, 215 to the upside. Obviously, 215 never got there, but 209.75 and the 208 uh, confirmed down. And here is right on the close. Any close below 197.50 is a sell signal, guys. And that's exactly where we closed. So the point is, if Tesla confirms today's channel tomorrow, you could get a potential another day run, another day uh, pull. So something to, to always think about and always be prepared. So that's it, guys. Hopefully, everybody had a good Tuesday. Hopefully, everybody had a wonderful rest. Three-day weekends are awesome. But the most important part is always stay prepared and always have uh, always have a two-sided view in the market so you don't get caught off guard and you're painted into a bias. Guys, God bless everybody. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.